everybody, welcome back to the Marco Book Club. Today we are talking about Exit West, and I can't find my copy of the book, so here is an image from the internet. Exit West by Motion Hamid is one of the best books I've read in a long while. I'm going to be including this book in a new series of books I'm calling like the Global Citizen Book Club. So I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, it's a great book that talks about a very important topic uh, that affects everybody around the world. It's called Immigration. You might have heard of it. It's a huge topic in 2018, 2019. The book was written in 2017, but it just seems to be becoming more and more relevant. And that is because people are moving around the world more often than ever. There's a lot of causes behind this, and this book talks about the causes, the effects, and the future of migration in great nuance. Let's talk about the author. Moshin Hamid is born in Pakistan, he lives in London, he splits his time between the United States, he used to work in finance, and he is an amazing author. He wrote a book that you might have heard about called How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia. It's not a self-help book, it's actually a novel, but it kind of is written in the type of self-help book literature that's so popular with people who are trying to escape from poverty in India and Pakistan. So. This book is kind of similar in some regards to that book. One of the great things I like about uh, Hamid's writing is that he is very ambiguous about location. It's kind of like, like in How to Get uh, Filthy Rich in Rising Asia, the location is South Asia, but you can't tell if it's India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. It just has the feel of that area, but he never mentions the city name. And so in being ambiguous, it's a little bit more uh, expansive and inclusive. In this book, Exit West, we're talking about two young people from the Middle East. All we know is it's in the Middle East. Um, it could be Syria, it could be Iraq, it's probably Syria, probably Aleppo, really, but you never really find out. The two people come from uh, the same town, slightly different backgrounds. You have Nadia and Saeed. Saeed is uh, from a more conservative, traditional family, uh, but he loves uh, Nadia, who he meets uh, one day before any warfare breaks out. Nadia is a bit more of a hipster. She, she's like a very modern woman living in uh, a relatively conservative society. The two of them start dating. Uh, they're using their phones to communicate, which uh, is kind of their way of getting around some of the social conventions. And then later on, uh, as migration begins, the phones become an interesting instrument in communication. Um, not, well, I don't want to ruin that part. I'll, I'll get there in a second. So the two of them uh, go on a couple of dates. Uh, they're having fun. They're being very just innocent. Uh, you, you know, they're listening to records. They're eating mash magic mushrooms together. I mean, these are, these are like settings that you could totally imagine happening here in California. And I think that's the point. The point is that young people around the world are largely similar, even if they come from apparently different, uh, very, very different cultures. But then suddenly, uh, unnamed government forces and unnamed uh, fundamentalists start fighting, and their hometown becomes engulfed in a civil war, and there is just brutal, brutal violence happening outside. Um, while they live there, they start to lose family members. They go outside one day, I remember one scene very vividly, uh, that, they, that they're that they going outside and they see young boys playing soccer and uh, they notice after a little while that it's not a soccer ball the kids are playing with, it's a beheaded head, human head, that somebody has, uh, you know, one of the religious fundamentalists has severed. And so their outside world literally becomes hell and they try to make it work, they try to live as they are occupied by these militants, which basically is ISIS. Then they are being bombarded by the government, which you can imagine being you know, uh, Assad's government in Syria, and they're caught in the crossfire. And at some point, they realize that they have to leave. And they begin a journey all the way towards the West, hence the name Exit West. So that's the basic premise of the book. What I think makes it interesting is a couple of things. First and foremost, there is this concept of doors. I won't give away any spoilers, but every single time that they change countries, they don't have an overland journey. They open a door and they walk through a door like a portal into a new world. The first place they go is in an island in Greece and then they continue their journey onwards. These doors are really, it is a symbol for privilege. Alongside the main narrative, you have a couple small vignettes, short stories of characters that we only meet once. 
there's a person in La Jolla, there is a sex tourist in, in Southeast Asia, there's a couple of other examples of Westerners, largely Westerners, who are using these same doors to travel to other places. And you realize that what the door symbolizes is the privilege to travel. Travel is something that, you know, a lot of us travel vloggers on YouTube were like, you know what? Here, your life's, you're having a problem, you're depressed, you don't know what to do with your life, go travel, just go do it, just do it and it'll solve all your problems. And we talk about travel like everyone can do it all the time and like it's a panacea and it's not. It's an extreme privilege that very, very few people are able to do. You know, it's been said that um, the refugee and the cosmopolitan are the two sides of the same coin in our modern global era. One person, the cosmopolitan, travels because he or she wants to. It's a, it's a luxury experience. And the other person, the refugee, travels because they have to, because they are being forced out of their home country because of war, because of famine, because of economic problems, and as we're seeing in Central America, sometimes because of gang violence. There are numerous causes to why people migrate, but the ability to do so is extremely restricted. And as this book progresses, we move from basically the present moment into the near future. As we move into the near future, Nadia and Saeed start to experience a couple of different situations. At first, they're welcomed by people in the West, and then there are protests against their presence and against the presence of migration in general. There's a lot of nativism that comes into play. And then also the two characters themselves start to experience their new environment differently. Without really spoiling the story, we, I can say that Saeed, being a bit more conservative, he starts to lean back on his own people and to lean back into his traditions. Whereas Nadia is feeling empowered by being a woman in the West and, and feels a lot more like she has uh, can relate to other people and she's relating with other immigrants and she becomes quite a feminist. Um, and as they both progress, we see them develop in different ways. We see the West deal with them in different ways. And I think that the author really talks about the experience of immigration in a very nuanced way. I mean, it's one of the charges against people like me, who I would describe myself 100% as a globalist. I'm an internationalist. I believe that humanity ultimately is one race, that we are all in this together and that we need to be able to work to accommodate all of the different people in our world and, and, and create the best optimal life for all of us. One of the counter arguments against that is oftentimes labeling someone as open borders uh, or, or just just saying like, just come on in, like just le letting people in no matter what the background, which obviously would create serious security problems. Um, and so what I like about this book is that it explores these questions with a lot of nuance. You, you get to see all sides of things. You get to see, understand why someone comes to a new country, how it's often not really a choice. Like they are, it's either die or survive and leave and also what is in the mentality of people who are taking in these refugees as hosts and how those refugees act in their new country, whether they choose to adopt and assimilate their culture or whether they choose to remain distinct and what ramifications those decisions have on the hosts and on the guests. And so I really enjoyed this book. I think you will too. Um, migration is a really important issue. Um, I think we all need to look at all angles of this of this issue because I guarantee you it will not be going away anytime soon. One of the theories I've heard, uh, which is worth considering, it's from another book called The Next Hundred Years, and it says that because birth rates in the West are declining and they are going, they are still very high in a lot of the developing world, that a lot of Western countries are going to have a shortage of labor in in a very short period of time, uh, and it would be actually competing for migrants in order to do important jobs such as nursing to take care of an aging population. Uh, I don't know if that's true. It depends on how fast automation advances. Um, but one thing that I do know is that um, this issue is not going away anytime soon. We can have other discussions in the future about whether the loss of jobs and the rising unemployment in the West is more caused from the presence of migrants or from automation or from outsourcing. Reality, it's a combination of all three, but spoiler alert, a lot of it's from automation. Um, but either way, this is a great book to start this discussion. I wanna have more books on these global topics. So if you have any ideas for what global issues we can explore through books, 
please leave them below in the comment section. I'm sure not everyone's going to see the same page on this. Some of you might think I'm being very light on migrants. I encourage you to read the book and then we can talk about it. Um, so leave your comments, positive or negative, down below. If you have enjoyed the book, please take a photo of it. With Take a selfie. Uh, tag me on it in Instagram. It's at Marco Ailing. You can use the hashtag Marco Book Club and I will respond to you. I really love seeing all of your, your photos. Uh, we're also going to be scheduling a live stream to discuss this video on Instagram. So stay tuned to my Instagram for a shot to find out when that is. I will try to find a time that works for everybody. I'm thinking probably Saturday mornings here in the States would be good. Um, so let me know if that works for you. Saturday, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. If that works for you, then we have a date. And I will talk to you guys soon. So uh, enjoy the book. <laughs> Peace.